p.m. on the 8th of April 2021, a tornado warning has been issued for about 5 to 10 minutes now for portions of Grimes, Burleson, and Brazos County in the Brazos Valley, also known as Southeast Texas. Uh, a potential tornado is located on the southeast side of College Station, but frankly, I'm more concerned about the fact we have baseball-sized hail confirmed falling in College Station right now. We've had golf ball to baseball size hail in Bryan College Station, both in Bryan and in College Station over the last 10 minutes, and we have a tornado warning in effect. So regardless, you, the outdoor warning sirens are going off, the uh, cell phone WIA, wireless emergency alerts are going off, and we've got big time hail falling in College Station. So if you're in Bryan College Station, you should have been sheltered already for 10 minutes the moment your phone started sharpening like an angry dog. A tornado warning continues for College Station, Brian Mil Millican, until 9.45 p.m. Oh, let's go ahead and read the warning text. At 9.19 p.m., a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over Northern College Station, moving southeast at 30 miles an hour, moving essentially right down Highway 6. Uh, Brian, you are going to be clear pretty much now. The backside of the thunderstorm ship is moving out of town. You might still have gusty winds. College Station, you likely still have very large hail falling. Uh, but the hail car will be out of College Station in about 10 minutes, maybe a little sooner for those on the north side of town. This is the only game in town, folks. Uh, the only severe storm. We've got a storm with some hail up northeast of Grosbeck, south of Mexia. or Mejia, uh, near Teague, moving southeast towards Buffalo and I-45. We have other storms trying to develop in Navarro County over towards Athens. We are expecting some thunderstorms this evening in about an hour or two to fire up around Tyler, and those could have some quarter-size hail. However, the only show at the gate, or the only show in town, per se, is this tornadic supercell currently exiting College Station to the southeast. We note on its present course, it could impact Navasota, in about 30 minutes, eventually making its way towards Montgomery, Todd Mission, Magnolia. If it for some reason were to continue and not weaken, and at some point this thing's going to weaken in the next hour or two, because the cap is intensifying, so we expect it's going to weaken. But if for some reason it doesn't, in an hour it's going to be approaching the northwest Houston metro near Pinehurst and Tomball. So this supercell has been going on since about 4.45 this afternoon, all the way back near Hamilton. Uh, so this is a long track supercell. This is the kind of stuff we can get on dry line days, where we only have one or two storms, but they can last for several hours and be big hailers, and even potentially produce a tornado or two. What I'm going to do is I want to look and see just how far this has gone today. So we're going to do a distance uh, we'll put about there. This supercell has traveled, uh, all intent and purposes, 150 miles this afternoon. One storm producing golf ball to baseball size hail, winds of 70. Uh, we have a, quite a bit of wind damage in Troy on Interstate 35, and now a tornado warning for College Station down to near Navasota. Uh, Millican, Carlos, you're in the tornado warning. Let's go through, well, you know what, here, let's do this. I'm going to turn off the radar data. I didn't know Periscope no longer allowed live streams. My apologies. I didn't know Periscope no longer allowed oh, live streams. Because my apologies. To start. So again, good evening. I'm David Reimer at the Texas Storm Chasers. It's the 8th of April, 2021, 9.24 p.m. in the evening. One severe storm that's been going, 150, going, going blah, 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 for 150 miles now. Uh, began about 4.30 this afternoon out towards Hamilton in western, southwestern North Texas up here and has traveled all the way southeast over the last five hours. Now bringing damaging hail, baseball-sized hail to Bryan to College Station. I'm afraid the hail damage is going to be quite 
unpleasant, to put it lightly. Uh, expensive is another way to put it. So, this storm is capable of producing a tornado, and if there's not a tornado, there's definitely the potential for damaging straight-line winds up to 70 miles per hour and destructive hail. If anything, I think this thing is a monster hailer. It's been a monster hailer all day, but when you have baseball-sized hail in a large population center, that is not good. Uh, we are expecting severe weather chances tomorrow, by the way. For those of you I have here by chance, North Texas, including the DFW Metroplex in Northeast Texas, another dry line day. Head over to our website, texasstormchasers.com, go to the weather blog, or just look for the latest article, you'll see it. And we talk about tomorrow's severe weather chances. North Texas, including DFW in Northeast Texas, pay attention tomorrow afternoon after 4 p.m. I just wanted to put that out there while folks are watching. Otherwise, we do have a single severe thunderstorm capable of producing baseball-sized hail and destructive winds over 70 miles an hour and the potential of a tornado. This is going to be moving southeast at 30 miles an hour. Uh, currently now exiting College Station to the southeast, moving towards just north of Wellborn. It's going to pass near or just north of Millican. Essentially, it's traveling right down Highway 6. Uh, those of you in Carlos on Highway 30, you're likely getting some big hail right now, golf ball to baseball size hail. At some point, we are expecting this thunderstorm will weaken uh, as the cap or the lid on the atmosphere intensifies and, for the lack of a more educated term, squashes it like a bug. But that has not happened yet, so until that does, this storm's going to continue to be a hailer a damaging wind producer, and even potentially produce a brief tornado. Sorry, I'm opening my chats back up. Because you know the National Weather Service can't actually have a system that stays up for more than two minutes. So, we have not heard any confirmed reports of a tornado this evening. Or the last five minutes, which is good, but this storm has definitely produced a lot of hail, a lot of damaging winds, and a lot of lightning. This thing's been shooting lightning out 40 miles east of the actual storm. You see all these lightning strikes? These are lightning strikes from this one storm. We've got lightning all the way over Interstate 45. In fact, we've got a lightning bolt all the way to Trinity. Here, I want to see how far that is. That's just ridiculous. When we say thunder roar, when thunder roars goes indoors, we mean it. 60 miles away from the parent thunderstorm, you've got lightning. 60 miles away. So when you say, oh, there's no storm nearby, it can't be lightning. Wrong. Sorry, Mother Nature doesn't work like that. So again, when thunder roars go indoors, the storm may be over College Station, but this thing's shooting lightning off like there's no tomorrow up to 60 miles away. Which is ridiculous, but you get that on high instability days. Welcome to spring in Texas, folks. It was, what, 80, 90 degrees today? The atmosphere is unstable. We're done with the cool season events where you have a lot of wind shear but low instability. This is a high shear, low instability event. Well, modest shear at least. So these are the classic dry line supercells we're used to dealing with in Texas that throw out baseball size hail. Now, luckily, low level wind shear hasn't been strong today. Otherwise, we would have been dealing with a tornado threat. And I'll be honest, up until about 3 o'clock, it didn't look like we were going to get storms on the dry line today. All day, we've been saying. We're going to have storms after 9 p.m. around Tyler and in East Texas because it looked like the dry line was going to stay capped. Mother Nature doesn't care what we think, and obviously it got just warm enough for one thunderstorm to punch through the cap. And once it punched through the cap, it went up really, really fast. And now we've had a long track supercell for the last five hours. In fact, let me see if I can loopy the radar. Yes, loopy is a technical word. Don't judge me for it. Oh, let me press this. Let's take a look at the storm over the last five hours, or however long this radar loop's going to let me. I mean, you could see back at about 745, it was over Troy and Interstate 35 in Central Texas, moving into the Brazos Valley. Just passed over College Station with golf ball to baseball size hail. Uh, the storm's been going all day since Hamilton at about 430 in the afternoon. All these radar echoes around San Marcos to west of 35 in the Hill Country, those are bats coming out. Here, you see that? Bats coming out south of Llano, near Blanco, Burnett, to New Braunfels. Those are bats. So, enough with the random 
bats. Let's get back to the storm and the reason why you're having to look at my bald head this evening. Uh, we've got a severe thunderstorm capable of producing, not capable, excuse me, with a history of producing hail up to the size of baseballs now moving southeast down Highway 6. The storm's going to be passing just north of Millican, very near Anderson, Carlos, over the next 10 to 15 minutes. The storm will be crossing Highway 90, very near Anderson, in about 10 minutes or so. And if it were to continue moving southeast without weakening, it would pass near or a bit north of Navasota and then cross Highway 105 near Stoneham or near or a bit west of Madison, excuse me, near or a bit west of um, Montgomery. That was interesting. Uh, otherwise, if this storm were not to weaken, and we think it will weaken at some point, the cap is going to squish it like a bug. We just don't know when. It honestly shouldn't be much longer. Uh, this storm could make it into the Houston metro or whatever's left of this storm. That being said, it is entirely possible in one hour this thing has evaporated into a shower. But when that process occurs, we I can't tell you yet. It's showing signs on radar that it might be starting to feel the influence of a stronger cap. And once that happens, hopefully we'll see the weakening trend commence, continue, etc. But for now, it's still up to about 50,000 feet in the atmosphere. I don't think we're going to see them extend the tornado warning, and by them, I mean the National Weather Service in Houston. The rotation isn't overly super strong in the low levels right now, but I mean, it's there. Let's switch from the how hard it's raining to the which way the wind is blowing, and yeah, we do have a circulation over Highway 6. Um, here, I'll just put a road label on here would be near Highway 6 and Peach Creek Road, southeast of College Station, and north of Navasota. Now, is there a tornado there? I, it, I can't tell you for sure. We haven't heard any ground truth of tornadoes. Uh, man, I'll tell you, we got some real bad hail in Bryan and College Station about 20 minutes ago from this storm. Uh, we're getting pictures of broken windows. The kind of hail damage that honestly means a lot of folks are going to be getting new windows and new roofs in Bryan and College Station over the weeks ahead. Um, sorry, folks. It's never fun, I know. But if there's some good news, it really looks like this storm is trying to come down in the hail intensity department. Let me switch over to a product. This is called the mean estimated hail size. We don't typically show it here because the radars usually... Uh, being ridiculous. Let me see if that'll help. But here, I'm just going to loop it over the last half hour, and you'll see how the hail core was relatively, for lack of a better term, massive as it moved over College Station and Bryan, but has really come down over the last 15 minutes. You see that? How we had reds and purples indicating golf ball to baseball size hail. Notice how it's gone down to yellow and orange. Uh, that's closer to quarter size hail. So hopefully that means we'll be able to get rid of this. Or hopefully it means at least the storm itself is going to be weakening soon. Or is in the process of being squashed by the cap. But until that happens and we're able to get rid of the storm completely, we're going to have to continue watching it closely. Okay, we're going to turn that off. Sorry, my radar program decided to be appropriate to crash again. There's a bug in this software the developer has yet to fix. But it's a very feature-packed program, and, I mean, graphically, it's you can't beat it unless you want to pay a, a commercial vendor a six-digit some, which isn't going to happen. So, again, I'm David Reimer with the Texas Storm Chasers. It's 9.34 in the evening on Thursday, the 8th of April, 2021. We've got a storm that has dropped baseball-sized hail in both, both Bryan and College Station. Uh, the thunderstorm is now southeast of College Station, southeast of Bryan. If you're in Bryan, College Station, you are clear from this thunderstorm. The threat of severe weather is over. No more tornado, no more hail falling. If you are southeast of Bryan College Station towards Navasota, Anderson, Millican, you are not clear yet. In fact, the circulation's looking a bit stronger on this scan. Why the roads didn't load, I don't know. Let's try this again. 
If I have to, I'll just switch over to my super duper looking uh, radar program that I use for analysis. So again, you can see we've actually got a pretty good looking uh, velocity signature now on this thunderstorm. Uh, it didn't look as hot 15 minutes ago. It looked more haley, but I can't, I mean, you can't argue against that. That's actually a pretty good looking velocity signature. Uh, it's going to be around Highway 6. I don't want to tell us straight. I want roads. Around Highway 6 and the Nav and Navasota Ridge Road, uh, just northeast of Millican. So, again, a potential for a brief tornado. And there you go. The latest scan, the velocity couplet looks much less organized. So, we might have just had a quick tornado spin up as the circulation crossed Highway 6 just north of Millican. Or about four miles southeast of Highway 6. and the William D. Fitch Parkway. So that would be Southeast College Station, well northwest of Navasota. Let's switch back over to the How Hard It's Raining mode, and we still have a pretty good hail core dumping hail in the process of what might be a hail dump. Southeast of College Station, near Carlos. Uh, the storm has produced significant hail damage in Bryan and College Station, and is moving southeast at 30 miles an hour. The good news is... The cap is strengthening, and we expect this storm is going to get squashed sooner rather than later. In fact, we're already seeing signs that is happening. As the radar estimated hail size, or the hail core loft with this thunderstorm, has come down substantially over the last 15 minutes, which is hopefully a sign the storm is about to be squashed into oblivion, and we can say adios. That being said, those of you in East Texas tonight, we are expecting additional storms with the potential for quarter to ping pong ball size hail. Folks around Tyler, for example. You'd see, this is the radar estimated hail core from a variety of radars over the last, oh, about 30 minutes. You could see a pretty good hail core showing on the radar back when the storm was over Bryan and College Station, uh, Texas A&M. Uh, and you can see the hail cores come down substantially over the last 10 minutes. So hopefully this is the process where the cap is starting to become stronger than the thunderstorm's updraft. And as that occurs, the thunderstorm is being squashed into oblivion. I honestly do think that is what we are seeing happening right now. The reflectivity structure looks much less organized. It, the storm is smaller in both intensity and scope. The velocity signature is looking much weaker as we take a look at it, uh, which way the wind is blowing mode. It looks much less organized. The radar estimated hail size has come down from baseballs. Uh, now, technically, if this was right, the hail size would be below severe limits. That being said, I still bet on some quarter size hail coming out of this thing from uh, when the storm was stronger about 10 minutes ago. Uh, all these are hail reports that are up in Bryan College Station. We've got multiple reports of baseball size hail. And these are all observed reports, by the way, from a product called MPing. It's a app you can use to submit uh, severe weather reports straight from your phone. And this allows all the folks in the field, emergency managers, meteorologists, private sector folks in the weather business to see reports in almost real time, and this actually helps verify severe weather warnings and let us know ground truth. Uh, so for example, you can see we've got hail reports all over College Station. These are just from the last 15 minutes, so I'm afraid there's been a multi-million dollar hailstorm. Yeah, that's appropriate. Multi-million dollar hailstorm in uh, Bryan College Station. We'll find out in a couple days probably how much the insured insurance claims are, but I'd say probably at least 10 million, if not much higher, but hopefully not. I can tell you, though, I've seen pictures of broken windows. Uh, Kyle Field has golf ball to baseball size hail covering it. It literally looks like it snowed at Kyle Field. We just retweeted it. So I'm afraid there's probably going to be a considerable amount of hail damage and insurance claims. Uh, one of my friends who's also a storm chaser, works as an insurance adjuster, a uh, private insurance adjuster who was contracted to insurance companies. So I would not be surprised if he's down in Bryan College Station in a couple days having to do some work. 
But looking farther north, we do have additional thunderstorms starting to fire up in East Texas, Southeast or North Texas. Uh, these are not severe, but could have some small hail right now. Uh, storm just east of Corsicana, another storm moving into Gun Barrel City. Uh, towards Athens, and then uh, another storm southwest of Tyler on Highway 31, and these are starting to fire up, and we're probably going to see a couple of them become marginally severe tonight, the potential for some quarter, maybe ping-pong ball-sized hail. Let's be clear, we do not expect something like what happened earlier with the dry line this afternoon. These are completely unrelated to the dry line. These are just firing as we have a little bit of lift increasing after sunset, and moisture return ahead of a developing storm system that will bring the chance of severe weather to North Texas, Northeast Texas, and frankly, a good portion of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana tomorrow night and on Saturday. The storm that fired up at 4.30 this afternoon is southwest of North Texas and has now moved about 150 to 160 miles southeast since then, fired off the dry line this afternoon somewhat surprisingly because temperatures got just a few degrees warmer than models were showing and that allowed the storm to bust through the cap and the result was a 150 mile track of hail damaging winds and maybe a brief tornado all right it looks like the national weather service has canceled the tornado warning for brazos and grimes county which means the tornado warning will be allowed to expire in four minutes at 9.45, but in all technicality, this storm is Dunsies. No more tornado warning. The tornado warning has been allowed to expire. The thunderstorm itself is showing signs, continued signs of weakening. Um, I'll admit, it's much weaker than it was 20 minutes ago when it dropped baseball size hailing. Uh, Bra in College Station and Bryan. However, it's still strong to marginally severe. And that inflow notch right there just north of Navasota is a little more potent on this last uh, radar scan. As we switch back over to the which way the wind is blowing mode, yeah, there is a bit of a velocity signature still showing rotation north of Navasota. We're looking a few thousand feet above the surface because we're looking from a weather radar back on Interstate 35 uh, near Granger, east of Georgetown, north of Taylor. So the radar is looking from oh, 75 miles away, which means we're looking at 7,000 feet. We're not looking in the low levels of the storm. We're looking at the mid-levels of the storm. That being said, I'm able to access data from a private radar at Texas A&M University, the meteorology department there actually has their own radar. You might see it. It's on top of one of the buildings. And there's still a pretty good looking low level reflectivity signature. There isn't too much in the way of a strong velocity signature, which is why we don't have a tornado warning. Mind you, this tornado warning, it has been allowed to expire, will expire in two minutes. But we're still going to have to keep an eye on this storm. I think it is going to be gone by 11 o'clock, at least if some science is right, as the cap continues to squash this storm. But, you know, you still got to watch it until it's gone. So those of you in Navasota, Anderson, keep an eye out on this storm. It's weakening, but it's not completely gone yet. I said it was Dunsies five minutes ago, but Mother Nature was like, <laughs> no. That's on me. So this storm will be crossing Highway 90 uh, between Navasota over Anderson all the way up to near Shiro. Over the next 10 minutes, the potential for nickel to quarter size hail. Hail sizes are much smaller than they were when the storm moved through Bryan College Station. But we are still going to need to keep an eye on this just in case it tries to perform one last hurrah before the cap completely squashes it into oblivion. So, with that being said, I'm David Reimer. We're going to keep an eye on storms in East Texas tonight, and we have the potential for some severe storms, another repeat of today, essentially, but farther north in North Texas and the DFW Metroplex in Northeast Texas after 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, which is Friday, April 9th, and then a line of severe storms looks like it's going to blow through Northeast Texas and the Arklatex tomorrow night with the potential for hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes cannot be ruled out. So we'll keep an eye on things. Be sure you're subscribed to us at TexasStormChasers.com. 
You can watch us in the Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. It's free. And you'll also get notifications when we send out new forecast blogs and publish new storm chasing videos. So if you haven't already, go download our free mobile app. It's in the App Store. Just search Texas Storm Chasers or open up your web browser. Type in texasweather.app, A-P-P, texasweather.app. It'll take you right to our mobile app. So I'm David Reimer at the Texas Storm Chasers. I really hope you don't have to see me again tonight, but if you do, we'll be here.